Good evening. I'd like to call the Planning Commission meeting to order. It's October 17th. And will uh, Mr. Nicholas do the honor of leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? This time, will Ms. Sharkey do the roll call? Let the record show that Commissioner O'Connor has an excused absence this evening. Chairman Nelson, Vice Chairman McCann, Commissioner Murphy, and Commissioner Donor are all present. Great, thank you. And then we're going to move on to our uh, next agenda item, which is approval of the minutes from the last regular scheduled commission meeting. Uh, are there any comments, or does anybody want to make a motion? I'll move that we accept the minutes. Great, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Donor made a motion to approve the minutes. Do a second? I'll second it. Perfect. All right, call for the vote. <laughs> That's right. Oh, we got a, there we go. All right, and that item passes. 
Next on the agenda is public comments. At this time, anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission, <clears throat> excuse me, during the public comment section of our agenda is asked to complete a request to speak form that is available at the door. <clears throat> and that completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission Secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Is there any person or any persons wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda, agenda is requested to do so at this time in order to conduct a timely meeting there will be a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for public comment portion of the agenda. State law does prohibit the Planning Commission from taking any action on a specific item as it, unless it appears on the posted agenda. Do we have any speakers tonight? No. All right, thank you. Seeing that, next up is the consent calendar and I don't believe we have any consent items. So that would move us on to public hearings. There are no public hearings. And then that would get us to public meetings, which is uh, item number two, which is a request for historical resource designation and participation in the Mills Act program at 34283 Via Lopez, historic resource application 16-0002. Do we have a staff report? Yes, Planner Leonie Schuller will give the staff report. Thank you. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have to declare a conflict on this in that I reside within 500 feet of the uh, house in question. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm sorry you're not going to be here for this. Me too. Thank you, and good evening, Commissioners. Um, as was indicated, this is an application um, for placement of a structure on the uh, city's historic register. Um, the property is located on Via Lopez, which is a, a short street um, near the intersection of Via California. It is one of two homes on this street which are identified on the city's historic inventory. Uh, by way of background, a little bit about the um, historic process, the historic designation process. In 1997, the city conducted an inventory to identify structures that uh, they felt would be eligible potentially to be placed on the city's register. And a number of candidates were identified, including 60 residential structures. And following that, in 2001, the city adopted a historic resources ordinance. And that ordinance contains 10 criteria um, that a structure needs to meet at least two of those 10 criteria in order to be considered for placement on the historic register. Um, those structures that are placed on the city's register are then eligible for fiscal benefits and also relief from certain development standards in order to make sure that we can preserve and maintain those structures in perpetuity. This is a, a photo from the street um, of the applicant's home that is uh, on the agenda this evening, this, the architectural style is a Spanish colonial revival, uh, which is a style that became popular in the 1920s following the Panama, California Exposition Fair that was held in San Diego in uh, 1915 until 1917. The Spanish colonial revival uh, architectural style incorporates classic Spanish architectural details and those that you can see here in the photo include uh, the white exterior stucco, dark wood trim, uh, red terracotta roof tiles, decorative wrought iron, carved entry doors, arched windows and doors, and then um, also hand-painted tiles that may appear on certain stair risers. Here I have a close-up of the entry of the home and um, Again, you can see many of the features that uh, I mentioned. You can see the tiles that are on the front entry stairs as well as the arched and carved entry door and the beautiful arched front window with its um, dark trim and the mullioned side panels. Here's a photo of the home um, viewed from the backyard. And again, the white exterior stucco with the red tile roof and there's a decorative wrought iron at the balcony 
again, the dark trim and the mullioned windows. So as I mentioned before, um, the ordinance asks that a structure be at least 50 years old and meet at least two of the established um, codified criteria. In this case, the inventory record indicates that this particular structure um, meets eight of the codified criteria. And generally, these criteria um, are related to the age and the architectural style of this home, the integrity of the architecture, and its contribution towards preserving buildings um, that are representative of the development of Dana Point historically. If the Planning Commission approves placement of the structure on the register, the applicant is also asking for a recommendation to the City Council of approval of the Mills Act contract. As I've indicated here, the Mills Act contract may be approved by the City Council based upon your recommendation and is only available to properties that are on the historic register. The Mills Act contract uh, offers the property owner um, a reduction in assessed property taxes with the expressed intent of freeing up monies that may be used then towards uh, the preservation and the improvement of the structure that is on the, on the register and on the Mills Act. So in conclusion, uh, the recommendation this evening by staff is to adopt the resolution to place the structure on the historic register and then to forward a recommendation to the City Council to authorize an agreement for participation in the Mills Act program. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Do, does any of the commissioners uh, have any questions for staff? Vice Chair. Thank you. Good evening. Um, is the, above the driveway there, is that all cantilevered or is there any kind of support over, over there? And I'm just curious if that was historic or not. It looks like it's cantilevered. You know, there have not been any additions to the home since the time of the inventory in 97. Mm -hmm. So that was in place at that time. I, I don't know the history of it prior to the inventory. Okay, thank you. Mr. Donor, no questions. I have one quick question for you in regards to what we're approving tonight or what we're being asked to, to uh, approve tonight and then recommend to the council. Is that include any of the items that would be on their con on the contract or is that something that the council deals with? The council with? will then review the contract. The, uh, if, if the home is placed on the register, um, the applicant will submit um, a list of, of sample um, or improvements that are being considered okay. for the home, and those then will be forwarded for the council for inclusion in the Mills Act contract. Got it, okay, thank you very much. I right. just <clears throat> wanted to add to that though, that if the um, commission felt compelled to suggest um, any additions to that contract, we would certainly communicate that to the council when they go to consider it. Great, thank you. All right, and tonight, is this, is this a public meeting? So do we take testimony or? <clears throat> well, we have to take um, public comment and, on any item on okay. the agenda. It's not technically a, a noticed hearing, I don't believe. Was this noticed? I can't recall. So it's just a public meeting to okay, take great. public comment. All right, well, there we go. We have one request to speak, and that is Bonnie Pitkin, which I believe is the owner of the residence. Uh, oh, please come on up. While the owner is coming up, I did want to apologize to the public for our poor um, projected <laughs> images. Um, I just sent an email to facilities to hopefully get that remedied, so I apologize that you could not see the images very well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, nice job, Leonie. Now, if you were in my class, I would Beautiful give you an home. A. Okay. That was really well done. You're very <laughs> articulate. <laughs> I'm impressed. Um, I'm a teacher. I taught eight years over at RHJ and the ENF, the Exceptional Needs Facility for the Severely Handicapped in Dana Point, and then I transferred over to the regular ed side. Very happy to be there eight years as well. And um, I've been following this home for eight years and saw it go through many changes. And so uh, Jeff, and I, Jeff Johnston and I both own this home. He's a professor up at UCI and he's working tonight. That's why he couldn't be here. But we're really excited about owning this home and maintaining the quality of the home and actually making it even more historical. I've had Barbara at my home for a couple of fundraisers and um, 
we're planning on replacing the, um, wrought, the fencing with wrought iron and we're redoing the yard to make it more um, Spanish style and maybe adding a little bit of detail on, um, detail on the home, but pretty minor. We're not gonna be changing anything structurally. I think the home is beautifully done and well, and it's been, it needs a little keeping up. <laughs> so so um, I'd appreciate it if you could approve this and help us in that quest of maintaining the histor history in Dana, um, all of Dana, because I, I really believe in the city and uh, we're doing this for uh, the greater good. That's why I work in Dana Point and work with these little ones. So I just hope that this is something you can approve and that you can come by the home one day and see it and be proud of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't think there's anybody else, so we'll bring it back to the commission for discussion. And Mr. Donner, do you wanna, or Commissioner Donner, do you wanna lead off? Yeah, I, I um, commend you on your profession in your calling that you've taken and also on the, the quality of the, the home. Um, I'm glad to see the people that are that care and, and, and are stepping forward with money where their, where their passions lie. Um, having seeing that it, uh, it meets the eight of the 10 criteria, uh, I'm inclined to uh, for this project. I, Great. I see it. Thank you. Vice Chairman. Yeah, I'd like to commend you on on you know seeking this designation and, and further strengthening its you know historic position and quality and preserving it, um, we have so much so many times that our our you know historic treasures are kind of tweaked and and uh, become less historic. So I commend you for doing it. and I'll be recommending approval to the council. Let's okay. my vote. Great. Well, let me. Um, I want to first start by uh, thanking you again. Uh, just like my fellow commissioners did. I think uh, volunteering volunteering to preserve a, a historic resource like this is a big commitment, and so anybody that does that, you know, I always wanna make sure we take the time to, uh, to recognize that commitment. I went by there this weekend, and it, it's, a, it's a gorgeous house. I mean, the pictures don't do it justice from what we saw tonight. The only thought that I had when I drove by was, wow, that, I wish that fence was wrought iron. So <laughs> clearly you and I are on the same page, because that, if anything, that would be the only uh, comment that I would have. I'm absolutely in support of protecting and uh, preserving the historic legacy of the city and commend you for that and, and would like to ask that we include a, that the uh, wrought iron as part of our recommendation. Um, but other than that, I will I'll leave it to the rest of the commission to make a motion. And thank you very much again. Uh, I'd like to um, make a motion. I, I recommend it. Uh, we approve the request for historical resource designation and participation in the Mills Act program at 34283 via Lopez uh, historic resource application, 16002. Great, that commissioner donor made a fur motion to approve the item. Uh, before I respond to that, I, I guess I'd like for you to further explain what you're thinking with respect to wrought iron. Are you thinking to make a recommendation or? Well, we don't have the contract, so I, don't, I think it would just be something for staff notes that they would include that as part of the contract that the city council ultimately approves. But so would it be, if that's, if council ultimately approved that, would then it become on like a, they have to do it or it's just recommended and encouraged or what kind of obligation does that impose on the homeowner? Well, what we would do first is we would talk to the homeowner. It's a contract, so both the city and the owner are entering into the contract, and so we would make sure that they were comfortable with that term, and uh, if so, we would note in the staff report that this particular component was recommended by the Planning Commission um, and that the homeowner was, it was acceptable to the homeowner. Okay. How would you feel about having that in the contract?
Bentley, which is quite small compared to what was added um, just a few more years. So I really don't know if he gets a good deal there or not. So there's, I know there's a motion. Just for clarity, I'm only making a suggestion that we put that in as a recommendation that I don't want to start to negotiate their contract and there's a lot that goes into that process. So as long as it's part of the staff discussion, it's I'm good with okay. with that. So uh, I second uh, the motion from Commissioner Donor. Okay. We got a first by Commissioner Donor, second by Vice Chair McCann. Let's go ahead and vote. And that item passes three to one. Congratulations. And again, thank you very much. And if we could get um, Danny back in here. All right. Let the record reflect that we are back to four planning commissioners. And we are moving on to item the shovel tonight here. Okay, so we have no old business and we have new business. Item number three, which is a preliminary review, PA 16-014, uh, by the Planning Commission of a proposed maintenance and six-week closure of the Surfside Pedestrian Overcrossing Bridge. Do we have a staff report? Yes, and Senior Planner Sean Nicholas will give the staff report. Yes, thank you and good evening, Planning Commissioner Sean Nicholas, Senior Planning. This item is a preliminary review, but... Above all else, it's actually an informational item. Uh, <clears throat> the item before you is associated with some repair and maintenance that's going to be occurring on the remaining portion of the overcrossing bridge there located on PCH in Capistrano Beach. Uh, the improvements are actually an administrative approval by staff for an in-concept that will be decided upon by the Coastal Commission. But due to the high-profile nature of the project, we felt it would be appropriate to bring the item to Planning Commission to update you on what this component of the project is, as well as uh, staff did send out a courtesy notice while not required to property owners within 300 feet to make them aware that we were gonna be presenting this component of the of the of this phase of the uh, updates out there to the bridge and allow them an opportunity to come and hear that and make comments should they choose to. So some background and uh, what their, this component is gonna be uh, revolving around, as I'm sure the commission knows, that the component of the bridge that went over uh, Pacific Coast Highway was removed over the summer months. And I've uh, talked with Matt Senecori, the city engineer, and has confirmed that that component of the project is pretty much all done for, um, just for the lack of just the final components of that project, but the light and crosswalk have been installed and are functional. This next component is really just temporary repair and maintenance uh, while they complete the final design and go through the necessary processes associated with the full bridge replacement. This component, this component of the project is gonna include cement replacement, structural supports replacements, as well as replacing the fencing material with a, a new fence that's gonna be uh, coated in a gray vinyl so that way it really blends into the background. Probably one of the biggest issues, <clears throat> reasons we wanted to bring this informational item is, is that this component of the project is gonna ultimately result in a six week closure of the bridge. And the reason for that is for safety primarily. It's gonna also provide some efficiencies to the improvements, but it's a very narrow area in which they have to do all this work, especially with the cement repair needed and with the replacement of the fencing. So obviously for safety reasons and needing to close that out officially. And they are looking to begin this work in March. Why it's so far out, it seems like, and that was one of the questions staff asked, was because not only do they still need to go through the coastal process, they still need to get permits from Metrolink, 
as well as complete final construction documents. So there's still a few additional things they need to go through following even this uh, informational meeting this evening. But they have ensured that the project will be completed and the bridge will be back open in time for the busy season starting with Memorial Day weekend. And again, <clears throat> the full update, the full bridge replacement project uh, will come fully for comment and review by the Planning Commission. Uh, the first, uh, the next update is looking to come back working with the county. It sounds like early 2017 at that time, uh, that's when comments would be appropriate for the full, uh, on the full replacement. But uh, it, they are targeting that early part of next year to be able to come back with some updates and some additional information. So I went out and took, uh, Steph went out and took some ex uh, pictures as they exist today, the bridge. You can see there, uh, there's a, some need of some love there into uh, fixing that up. And I think that everyone will agree that uh, that fencing would definitely need uh, be served well by the replacement of the gray vinyl. The goal with the gray vinyl fencing was that it would blend in more into the background and, and not be so visible. Uh, so that way it wouldn't be as imposing with a black vinyl or some other color vinyl fencing. Uh, we've been working with the county staff closely in terms of this project. And um, again, the goal is that aesthetically, that it will be a much more newer and clean, you know, all comprehensive looking complete bridge. So it'll be much you know, up to date, much more up to date and much cleaner. So, um, you know, we're all, everything everyone's looking forward to, a, a, especially since a prominent feature as you're coming in from the community from the south, our southern boundary and along PCH, I think it will be a big improvement. So uh, staff has reviewed the proposed project that will ultimately go uh, for uh, Coastal Commission approval. Staff has not identified any issues associated with the project. Um, but again, because of the, the, the high profile nature of the project and the closure, we wanted to bring it before the commission just to make you aware. Um, again, it will be reopened in time for those busy summer months. Again, I just want to stress that city staff and the county are working <coughs> hand in hand with this phase of the project to ensure that we do get an aesthetically appeasing, appealing uh, product when this is all done so the bridge, the, the bridge does look newer and, um, and uh, you know, something we'll be proud of, obviously, and what we expect here in terms of projects in the city of Dana Point. And uh, lastly, again, just want to reiterate that the next update on the full replacement will come in early 2017. And uh, with that, that concludes staff's presentation. Staff is available as well as uh, representative from the county should commission have any questions. Thank you. Does uh, the commission have any questions? Yes. Um, the full replacement that you're talking about coming forward, uh, this is just a temporary repairs of that bridge. Full replacement, does that include the bridge over the highway as well as over the railroad bridge? That is my understanding, but again, I believe the project is still being fully designed in those who are, you know, could probably be. I, let me correct you. No. The at-grade crosswalk is the permanent improvement over the highway, so the permanent replacement of the bridge will just be over the train tracks. Um, I guess, you know, my, my comment, and I guess, um, is that the traffic, the bridge over the traffic was for pedestrian safety, and that was eliminated, that permanently eliminated. Uh, and anyone that can't climb the stairs can't use the railroad bridge and couldn't use the other pedestrian bridge for the highway. Um, so um, there, there could be uh, significant savings if there was a crossing at the railroad at pedestrian level versus building a bridge. So we're gonna temporarily fix a bridge, then we're gonna create a permanent bridge, and yet, uh, people have to cross the highway, which is there's more cars coming than trains. So it seems that would, it's, it seems like uh, we've made it less safe and more costly. Um, that's my, my opinion. Okay. Vice Chair. Uh, thanks for the update. I'm glad to see that the maintenance work is getting done and I'm glad to see that uh, you know, it's scheduled around summer, so I'm concerned that they don't start on time, but love to see it done before Memorial Day. Thank you. Commissioner Murphy, do you have any Thank you. questions or comments? Um, 
Given that we're working with the County of Orange, as well as with, you know, looking toward the Coastal Commission review, uh, it sounds like a lot of things have to happen at one time to get, get us to where we want to be before Memorial Day. Can you clarify anything that, as far as you know, that might impede the ability to get, keep this on track given the other entities? Yeah, I, that was a great question. That was one of the things that staff uh, took to the county and just making sure and again, trying to understand their time frame. Um, they said that, indicated that this was actually a very conservative time frame that they're hoping to maybe even start earlier than this and they felt that this would give them more than substantial time to get through all the regulatory uh, issues that they have to and to finalize that um, the construction components of it which are nearly complete. Um, but they felt that this was a conservative approach and that's why they've indicated for mar shooting for March. But they feel that, that they feel very comfortable as they've said with that start time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I, I had actually this similar reaction that Commissioner Donor had in regards to repairing and then removing and building new. And my assumption is given ADA code and other things that the new bridge would include an elevator and some other things that would be required by code, but that's an assumption. So I don't know if anybody is here from the county or even the city that wants to can address specifically that that issue. Perhaps the city engineer Matt Sinecore, he is Perfect. president. He can probably provide a, some update. As no, as I know, he's been very involved with the talks. Good evening, planning commissioners. Good to see you. Um, always glad to be here with you. The answer to the question is it's absolutely required by ADA that you build a new facility and this. Project, if you've been down there, it's actually the improvements that were built on the street will accommodate a future elevator and tower with the new facility. That's why you see that big, wide, bulb out area so that we have some space for the elevator tower since the railroad will not let us build that facility on their property. So I hope that Perfect. answers Perfect. Yeah, I think that, that was what I thought, but um, that was my comment. I know the you guys did a great job of getting that stuff done or whoever worked on that, so it went fast. It was. A, certainly not the best time of year to deal with what you guys had to deal with. So um, I commend everybody who worked on that, uh, that uh, removal project. It went flawlessly. So um, I don't think there's anything for us to do on this other than just receive the information. And Correct. Um, I, you should ask to see if there's any speaker cards. But, but we yeah. certainly want to hear from the public. So if there's anybody here that wishes to speak on this item, you're welcome to come on up. Do we have any speaker cards? Anybody want to? Volunteer to come up and speak? All right. I guess not. That moves us on to the next agenda item, which I'm guessing is staff reports, which I see none. And then on to Commissioner comments. Commissioner Donor. Um, <clears throat> I just, uh, I spent uh, a day, uh, Sunday the 2nd, uh, at the Game Change uh, festival. Uh, it was a fundraiser for uh, for children facing life-threatening illnesses, uh, and Dana Point was a, a part sponsor, and uh, the, it was a, a reasonably well attended. But uh, but I think that uh, the, the purpose was was uh, well founded. Uh, the uh, person running the whole event uh, had a child that uh, uh, created that had uh, a, a debilitating illness and uh, found that for eight hours they had to go through treatment and with a computer game it sped the time up and they didn't have to watch the cooking channel. So um, they made it his life's mission then to get computer games to all the children in hospitals and they visit over 800 hospitals and they're giving away uh, a little suitcase that has a, a, a console with a video gaming and all the gaming companies came to this event and so they had a big tent with music and another tent with all the gaming uh, the current games uh, that they were letting people try out. So it was a, it was a, a, an excellent event held at Sea Terrace Park. Excellent. Did you play any games? I put uh, bracelets on people to make sure they were 21. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Smart man. Well, I have very little to say other than I was able to attend the league's uh, uh, yearly conference, I guess they call it, and uh, there was some really good information uh, produced and um, a lot of uh, interesting topics. So um, that's all I have tonight. Vice Chair. Thank you. Um, 
couple quick questions. Do you know, does anybody know, maybe Matt, what's going on with the improvements down by Doheny? Um, I know there's some, looks like curb that's being raised, but then the area's been cleared out between the harbor and that street, what is it, Porto or something? So um, we can't really talk about items that are not specifically on the agenda, but we're more than happy if you give us your questions that we can get you answers to those. So if you just email me or Shana, we can we can do that. But we can't discuss items that are not on the agenda. Okay, thanks. And that next is my second question. So other than that, um, I just you know want to say I'm continually struck by by how beautiful Dana Point is and how much I love it, and I'll leave it at that. Commissioner Murphy. I will second what you had to say about Dana Point. Um, it, you know, we had a great stand, uh, summer, obviously, in town, and there were so many wonderful things going on in the art walk yesterday. There's always, you know, you walk out and you think, boy, am I really fortunate <laughs> to live here. And, but I do miss the trolleys. <laughs> I really miss the trolleys. So, but other than that, it's good to see you all again. Good to see you too. And I will add one more comment, which is we will not be back before November 8th. So I urge everybody, if you're not happy or you are happy, to get out and vote. Can I ask? Or Jack, if you can ask this. Yeah. Um, try. November. Yeah, I'll try. We'll see how Ursula's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, November meetings. Um, I know I'm going to be traveling what would be the scheduled second meeting of November, do we have any foresight on like agendas or consolidate the two into one or I just miss or? I don't know. We, have, we currently have one item scheduled for November 14th. Uh, I anticipate that we would have one for the second meeting in November as well. Um, it's obviously at your discretion if you wanted to consolidate meetings. I do know the applicant is fairly anxious on the November 14th, so it would be a delay to them if we pushed it back. Okay. Well, so you're going to be here on the 14th. You won't be here for the second meeting? I will, I will not be. I'm picking up my daughter on the 28th. So, But, if, you know, that's my bad. I'm not trying to drive the bus here. Well, we can look and see. It's a function of whether we can get the item that right now is looking set to go for that second meeting. I'm not sure whether it'll be ready for that first meeting in October, but if we can make that happen, we will try to do so. Um, and then if we didn't have anything for the second meeting, we would cancel it. So we'll we'll keep you posted. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. And that moves us to adjournment for the next regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be held on Monday, November 14th, 2016, be beginning at 6 p.m. or soon thereafter in the City Council Chambers located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Suite 210, Dana Point, California.